whooping cough. It's also known as pertussis. It is a highly contagious respiratory illness, and the Houston Health Department says cases of the disease in Texas have tripled this year. Joining us live to help us understand how parents can help their babies and infants avoid this disease is Chief Medical Officer for the City of Houston, Dr. David Purse. Good morning, Dr. Purse. Good morning, Amy. Thanks for having me back. Yeah, of course. So can you talk to us about um, how parents can tell? Because often, you know, your child may seem stuffy or your baby, they can't tell you what's wrong. But how is there a way to notice the difference between a regular cough or congestion and that they might have whooping cough? Yeah, so whooping cough is a real challenge when it comes to figuring out if this is what your child is suffering from because in the first couple of weeks of illness, the symptoms are almost exactly the same as a common cold. So the child is going to have a runny nose, stuffiness, maybe feeling a little bit warm. Um, they're going to have a cough. It won't be a big deal of a cough. It'll be a mild cough. That's the first couple of weeks. And, and here's the other thing is that babies, they may not have a cough at all. And then yeah. other kids may have, um, you know, what seems like a, a, a simple cold for the entire length of the illness. But sometimes babies will get really, really sick with it, and their symptoms will be they're just going to stop breathing. Now, they, they, this is just for periods, but they'll turn blue. It scares the heck out of mom and dad. Yeah. And so, again, early on, it is really difficult to know what your child is suffering from. Well, then it makes me think, I mean, you obviously want to take your child in for anything. I mean, with this going around, but th is that the symptom, the late symptoms where they might just stop breathing completely? Or if you let it escalate past the cough, I mean, are there later symptoms that are different from a regular respiratory illness? Yeah, that's a great question. So. I guess most times with, with children, even the little ones, their symptoms in the first couple of weeks would be pretty mild. Should your child, you know, appear to stop breathing and turn blue, I, I don't care when it is, mm -hmm. that needs to go either to the emergency department or to your doctor's office uh, very, very quickly. So whether that's whooping cough or something else, that is a big, huge red flag that parents need to jump on. Now, in most cases, what's going to happen is the first couple of weeks will just seem like a, a, a simple cold. What's gonna happen after that in the next couple of weeks is gonna be these these paroxysms, these coughing fits, where the kids will be coughing, 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 coughing. It gets so bad that sometimes children will vomit during this. Ah. And it gets the name whooping cough because after the coughing, they will, as they try to breathe back in air again, they make this whoop sound. And that's where the term whooping cough comes from. And here's one of the things to understand. This goes on for weeks. In fact, it can go on for over two months in some cases, but it generally goes on for a long time. It's these coughing spasms, Afterwards, the kid is exhausted. Now, in between the coughing sp mm -hmm. spasms, the kids seem pretty well, but it's those, those spasms of coughing that are the, really the hallmark yeah. uh, of the parents need to watch out for. And that must be miserable. But if I'm remembering correctly, I mean, isn't the whooping, whooping cough that's a normal immunization that if we're able to take our kids to the pediatrician, they should be getting immunized for that? Yeah, they do. Now, here's the thing is that Remember what vaccines do, and we've, we've talked about this before. Remember, vaccines are there to teach your immune system what to look out for. Trying uh -huh. to figure out, okay, this is me, this is okay, this is not me, this is not okay. And trying to teach your immune system what is not me and what is not okay. With little kids, their immune systems are brand new, they don't learn as quick. And so, yes, there are vaccines that are available, and the, the dosing schedule is generally at uh, two, four, and six months of age. Uh -huh. And it isn't actually until after that that they start having some really decent immunity. And in fact, they'll get a, uh, another shot in 15 to 18 months, and then again in four to six years. But in those first, certainly in the first six months or more, the, although they've been getting the vaccines, the immune system has not totally learned. So there's some protection, but not total protection. So then do you have any idea why we're seeing this increase, like the, the uh, triple number of cases in Texas? Do we think it's because fewer people are getting the vaccine or any way to know? Yeah, so it's, it's too early to know for sure, but you know, you touch on the, what my big concern is. There's been this big anti-vax movement across America, really, and that really, really scares me. And the reason is that we are seeing a lot more pertussis this year, a lot more whooping cough. And remember, of the kids who get it, uh, for those that are less than a year old, about half of them are going to require hospitalization. This is a serious illness. And then about 2% of those kids who get hospitalized, they're going to die from it. So this is a really serious illness. And so, you know, as we get this anti-vax movement going on, we, we know what it was like before we had the vaccine. We know lots and lots of children died from it. Mm -hmm. Since we've had the vaccine, that has not been an issue. So this is a concern. But I can't say that that's why we're seeing it this year, but that is a concern. Yeah, so let's talk a little bit about um, other people in the family, um, because I think that whooping cough schedule, it kind of, for vaccinations, drops off. I mean, when we get to be adults, we've sort of finished all those except for flu and COVID and all the other things. Yeah. Should everybody in the family be getting, if there are small infants in the home, should everyone in the family be getting a whooping cough vaccine? 
Yeah, a absolutely. And the, and the vaccine itself is actually a combination. Again, this is a combination we've been using for decades. Mm -hmm. It has diphtheria, tetanus, and pertussis. There's one formulation for kids under seven years old and another formulation for those of us over seven years of age. And you're right. The most common person to infect a child is actually it's generally a member of their own family. And you're also right in that as adults, we tend to not worry about our vaccines so much. And so, you know, it, it is unfortunately it's often it's a parent or grandparent, an aunt or an uncle that winds up infecting the child. Because because they've let their vaccines drop off. So yeah, very important that adults in the home get it. We, we call it cocooning. Uh -huh. So every layer around the child, um, because you know, everything that we do to prevent these illnesses, we've talked about this before, it's like Swiss cheese. There's a, there's a hole, there's a gap uh -huh. in every, every single layer, but you get enough layers on there, and then there's no way for the, for the virus to get to the child. Yeah, absolutely. Let's talk about families who don't have medical insurance or who don't have a, a pediatrician where they just always know to go to get their vaccines. Where should they go? Do they do this vaccine at like a CVS or like a health clinic? So many, vac so many uh, of the local neighborhood pharmacies carry these vaccines. That's absolutely uh, true. And you can get it, especially if you're insured, they should be able to cover you for those things. If you don't have insurance or um, you can't get to, for whatever reason you can't, your safety net, if you live in the city of Houston, is the Houston Health Department. Uh, we'll charge you on a sliding scale, depending on what your economics is. It may be free, it may be $5. Worst case, it's $15. Mm -hmm. And if you don't know where your closest place is, you can call the Houston Health Department at 832 393-4220. We'll let you know where your nearest health center is, you know, public health center is, and uh, get you an appointment there. All right. Always good information. Dr. Purse, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you, Amy. All right. Now, we want to